Welcome to the Air Gun Show. It's great to be back and I'm delighted to say that Rich Saunders is also going to be joining us in some future episodes. So this week I'm going to be taking a look at a couple of brilliant affordable telescopic sites from John Rothery Wholesale. But first up, I'm going to be targeting grey squirrels using some slightly different kit from usual. So let's get into it. Right, I'm out on the squirrels this evening and my gun of choice for this session is the FX Dynamic Compact. Now, I've had this gun on loan for a little while now. I was reviewing it initially for Air Gun World, but it's performed so well on the range that I couldn't, couldn't resist taking it out for one or two hunting trips. Um, it's actually a sub 12 foot pound model, and you may well have seen in my previous hunting video that I have been trying out, I've got them here actually, JTS Dead Center Pellets. Um, Previously I was using the 18 grain version with a, an FAC rated gun. This, these are the 16 grains and this sub 12 is absolutely stacking them. So, so far I'm well impressed. Uh, another piece of kit that you might recognize from my, my previous hunting video is the Infrared Tube TD70L V2. And this is a digital day and night scope from Scott Country and on that previous outing, we were out in the dark, targeting really skittish rabbits that were very, very edgy. And the night vision stealth of, of this setup really did help us to put a few rabbits in the bag on what was a very tricky evening. As difficult as it was, I really enjoyed that rabbit shooting session. But apart from being packed with features, this is a day and night scope and it produces a full colour image by day and also an exceptionally good colour image in really low light, sort of round about dusk, twilight conditions. Now, it just happens that the feeder I'm going to be targeting this evening, I've shot a lot of squirrels from it. The activity is just starting to slow down. Now, not surprisingly, the remaining squirrels are becoming quite wary of it and they seem to be holding back and not coming out to feed until the light has almost completely gone. So I actually thought that would be a brilliant test to be able to show you the sort of image that this scope does produce in poor light conditions. Now I was actually out uh, yesterday evening. Um, I wasn't out for long, but I did manage to bag one squirrel and testament to those JTS pellets, it was hit so hard that I actually thought it was going to stay up on top of the feeder. It looked like it was going to expire there. Now, it did eventually roll off, but it left a heck of a mess on top of the feeder where it bled out. Anyway, that was last night. This is tonight, so let's get into the hide and see if we can't shoot a few more. Well, there are definitely a lot more birds visiting this feeding station than there were a few months ago. And I can only imagine that that is because there are fewer gray squirrels here bullying them away. However, I'm confident that there is still one or two to be had here. So it's just a matter of being patient and waiting for them to come out to feed. Well, there is the first squirrel of the evening. Now, absolutely typical. It feels like I haven't taken my eyes off the feeder all night. But I looked away for a moment, looked back, and it was there helping itself to a peanut. I certainly didn't see it arrive. Now, it looked for a moment, actually, like it was going to be a dangler, as it seemed to grab out for the, the corner of the feeder as it was dropping. But it dropped stone dead, and that, that pellet caught it right between the eye and ear. There's lights out for that one.
and there's another one. What a clean kill that was. Testament to those dead centre pellets, it just rolled that one over. And they, I've got to admit, it's quite slow going, but it proves that it is worth being patient and just hanging around to mop up those last few squirrels before you're tempted to move the feeders on and try another spot. Well, it is very, very slow this evening, but I've got to say, I'm not at all surprised. Now, I mentioned at the outset that I've shot a lot of squirrels from this particular feeding station. I actually had it set up here about 18 months ago and shot 90 odd squirrels in a few months. And that, that hit this area very hard. More recently, I've had this feeding station going for a few months and I've had 25, 30 squirrels off of it, which again, it shows that I've hit them back because even at the outset, there was nothing like the numbers that there were in that previous campaign and they're really dropping off now. However, me talking isn't gonna help the situation, so I'm gonna to try to be quiet, and fingers crossed, we will see a few. Right, well I think I'm gonna make that do because I honestly don't even think the squirrels here are gonna start venturing out this late. I mean, the owls are gonna be on the move soon and they're certainly not gonna to wanna to cross paths with them. Now I've managed to have two, and although that doesn't really make for the most action-packed session, as I've already said, the, the purpose is to be thorough, and now's the time that you've really got to screw the nut and make sure you've really mopped them up, especially bearing in mind that our purpose here is to reduce the damage that they're causing to the trees and the negative impact that they're having to other native wildlife in the woods here. And it's at times like this, when it is really tough, that you need to have absolute faith in your kit and certainly the gun scope combo's done the job and those dead center pellets have been absolutely bowling the squirrels over with the couple of chances that I have had. Now I think what I probably will do here now is have one or two more sessions because I do think it's worth having at least one blank session to confirm that you have really exhausted a spot before packing up from here, relocating to another area in the woods and then I assume it'll be busier there um, and we'll get more action again. So what I'm gonna do is pick up the couple of squirrels that I've had and head for home. The new infrared tube digital day and night scope proving it's worth in low light conditions there. Next up, I'm taking a look at a couple of great value telescopic sites. I get a lot of requests to feature affordable kits, so I thought I'd take a look at a couple of great value telescopic sites in this week's review. So first up, I've got the Richter Optic Exact 3 to 9 by 42 AO from John Rothery Wholesale. Now it's a really good little scope with a recommended retail price of just £49.99. So this is a scope of fairly typical proportions. It's about 33 centimetres long and weighs around 450 grams. Now that means that it should pair well with most air guns from compact ball pups right through to full-sized rifles. Now it's tidily constructed and it's got fairly simple lines to its design and that actually means that it should be an easy scope to keep clean. This scope is fog proof and shock proof, which means it's fine for use on recoiling air guns. Now it sits inside a tough aluminium casing that's got an anti-corrosion uh, coating and it's got a 25 millimeter tube. 
Lenses are multi-coated, which results in a nice clear sight picture, and the 42mm objective lens lets in plenty of light for dawn and dusk shooting. Zoom is three to nine times, which I reckon is just about right for basic air gun shooting. Now the lower end of that scale gives you a brighter sight picture and a wider field of view, which can be really helpful when shooting in low light conditions. Now at eight or nine times, that's a bit more suited to tackling longer range targets. So your magnification is wound up and down via a smooth turning dial just in front of the ocular bell. A nice touch with this model is the fact that it's parallax adjustable from 10 yards out to infinity. So that means that you can dial out parallax error and keep the image sharp at whatever range you're shooting over. Now, parallax adjustment is made by turning the collar at the front of the scope. Now that collar turns smoothly and it's marked with ranges, so you can actually use it to estimate range when your target snaps into focus when you've got the scope set on higher magnification. Now you can get this scope's reticle pin sharp for your eye by turning the fast focus eyepiece at the rear of the scope. Now I really like this reticle. It's got milled up markings on it so that you can accurately apply hold over, hold under or windage adjustment to your shots, but it's also really nice and fine, which really helps with precise shot placement. Screw off the turret caps and you've got access to the tool-free windage and elevation turrets. Now they turn with really clear stops, each one adjusting the point of impact by one quarter MOA. Now I really don't think you can beat this scope when it comes to features and performance for under 50 pounds, but if all that isn't enough, it even comes supplied with push-on flip-up lens covers. By the magic of television, you're now looking at the Walther ZF 3-9x44 Sniper Telescopic Sight, which is also from John Rothery Wholesale. Now we're moving up into the next price bracket here, but this scope remains pretty affordable at £114.95. This solid little scope is also fog proof and shock proof. Now it's 32 centimetres long and it also comes supplied with flip up lens covers as well as a set of Picatinny type mounts for really secure attachment. Now weight including those mounts is about 640 grams. Now as you'll see here the RM8 actually has a dovetail rail rather than a Picatinny rail but I've just put some simple adapters in there and it's really securely attached. Now this optic is fixed parallax at about 10 meters. Now that's perfect for backyard plinking and close range pest control. But if you wind down the magnification to increase the depth of field, the image is still sharp at 30 meters. Now this scope has a 25 millimeter tube and it's multi-coated lenses and slightly larger 44 millimeter objective lens deliver a sharp, clear sight picture in most light conditions. As with the previous model, there's a fast focus dial at the back so you can get the reticle nice and sharp. Again, it's a reticle of the mill dot design and it's got reference points so that you can aim off to compensate for pellet drop and wind drift. Now it's a nice bold reticle and I've got on really well with it. Again, you've got the versatility of three to nine times variable magnification. And I really like the chunky notched zoom wheel, which is easy to operate even with gloved hands. Now, as I've already said, if you turn the zoom right down, that increases the depth of field so the target remains in focus, whether it's at close range or further away. The chunky resettable windage and elevation turrets on this scope are a real standout feature. Now they don't have caps, so instead you slacken off the locking wheel at their base for tool free adjustment. Now they then turn with really clear clicks, each one adjusting the point of impact by one quarter of an inch at 100 yards. Once you're zeroed, you simply lock them back up and they're not going anywhere. So, there you have two telescopic sites offering exceptional value for money. 
Now the more tactical looking Walther is still what I would regard as an affordable scope at just over £100 and of course that includes those Picatinny type mounts too. Now how the Richter manages to deliver such performance at under £50 really is beyond me but both these scopes do what they need to do. So if you're in the market for a decent telescopic sight but don't have an absolute fortune to spend do take a look through these two. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode. Thank you for watching and I'll be back again with more in two weeks time. Now before I go, I just want to let you know about the essential guide to air gun shooting. Now this is a book -zine with articles by myself and the rest of the air gun world team and it's aimed at improving uh, skills for newcomers but also for more experienced shots too. Now if you can't find it in your local uh, news agents you should be able to get it from airgunshooting.co.uk I will try to remember to put a link in the show description so look out for that there's also a competition in there in which you can win a year's subscription to Airgun World magazine and also free shooting insurance so I'll see you again in, the, in a fortnight in the meantime enjoy your shooting and stay safe